Telegram, WhatsApp, Facebook, Instagram, all of that notifications that Hi, thank you for clicking on this video and today what I'm going to share with you is how to be a productive Flutter developer. So productivity has actually increased throughout the ages due to industrialization to now the tech revolution and it gives us the tools to become more productive as we have automation in place. However, we always think that we can be more productive. But there's many things that we might overlook that I'm going to share with you later. As a Flutter developer, you know that writing Flutter is a pleasant, productive and a fast experience. However, with these tips that I'm going to share with you, not only you'll be a more productive Flutter developer, but you'll be a Flutterer developer, one level up. Of a Flutter developer. So these are the non-technical and technical ways that I have used to become more productive. So number one, remove any communications. Communications like Slack, Telegram, WhatsApp, Facebook, Instagram, all of that notifications, that cling, that vibration, remove all of that because we have been accustomed to reply or to look at our phone and be distracted. So communications is one thing that you have to remove if you want to work more productively as a Flutter developer. Even vibration mode does not help you because once you hear that vibration, you tend to want to look at your phone. You probably reach out to your phone. Another thing is to make your phone not in your sight, meaning putting your phone away from your visual area. If you can't see your phone, you are not tempted to use your phone. And that worked very well for me. Even back when I was working as a Flutter developer inside a startup, I just removed my workplace chat when I was coding. And that helped me a lot in just focusing on my work. So this simple step, try it. You will be surprised on how much you can focus on. Secondly, accept that you can't multitask. Don't fucking bullshit with me. Not all humans can multitask. Stop. Just just stop. So you stop ready? So once you have said that you can't multitask, you will actually try to focus more on one thing rather than many many things. So let me ask you a simple question. If you are assigned to do three tasks in a day versus if you are assigned to do one task in that day, which day do you think will be the most productive for you? Which day will give you the best result? I'm assuming you're going to say the one day with one task because you can focus on that one task and then you can produce an output that's with high quality. So just accept that you can't multitask and just focus on one. Number three is to clean up your messiness. What I mean by messiness is your hundreds of tabs that you have in your web browser and your folders and files inside your desktop folder. These things actually make you distracted because once you open your desktop, you'll see files and folders and then you'll be thinking, hey, maybe I should, you know, concentrate on this or maybe I should concentrate on this. So you need to have a clean desktop, which I did. The next thing is the hundreds of tabs that you have inside your web browser, I honestly think that you wouldn't even read 90% or even 99% of that. What I do is most of the time to have two to three tabs and that's what I usually need to solve a problem or I need to debug. And your desktop, how I structure my desktop is how I structure my Flutter project. So inside my desktop, there's, there's only one folder which is called main. Then inside my main folder, there are other sub folders that I have, for example, books, Flutter projects, images, videos, my face, whatever. And that helped me a lot in not being stressed when I open my desktop. Number four is to always, always, I'm going to say this many, many times, is to refactor your code. I'm not saying to set a day to refactor. I'm not saying after you push a feature that you refactor. No, I'm saying that you should refactor as you go 
meaning when you code, you refactor. So you might have a deadline or your employers don't care about the code quality but just the result. In my opinion, I would probably convince my employer to say that code quality is important because I'll explain to him in the analogy of a storage warehouse. If the storage warehouse is not properly, you know, labeled, not properly organized or arranged, then you'll have a very hard time to find what you want. So if you were to refactor or reorganize your storage warehouse properly with good labels, with good structure and organization, then it's easier for you to look for the item. So an example is that if you want to debug, then you have to find the line of code and then all of this structure will help you in the future to prevent any confusion and you are not going to waste more time finding stuff. So you are trying to spend more time to refactor to avoid spending more time to debug if you get it. And lastly, document, document, document. So for example, I was working for a startup called PS Love where I had to do their period tracker app. So as a guy myself, I don't understand what is menstrual cycle, I don't understand what's periods, I don't understand what's ovulation. And the thing is, if I were to write in code, I think 95% of the time for male developers, we won't understand. So what I have to do was to write a documentation on the code to explain why I add the numbers, why I add the days, why I have this kind of logic so that it can explain on why I do this kind of code. No matter how clean your code is, if you can't explain why you do it, then is it really clean code? That's why document, most of the time, document the business logic behind the different lines of code that you have implemented. So what is the difference between refactoring and documenting? Refactoring in the example of the storage warehouse is that refactoring is basically organizing the boxes at places that you understand. You label them correctly and also making sure that you put the items in the boxes correctly. While documenting is why you put the boxes at the bottom. So for example, the boxes at the bottom is for fragile items because if you put it at the top, then if it falls, then the items will break. So you can put a small little note that says this box is fragile and is needed to be placed at the bottom. Then why do you need the boxes at the top? Because these boxes are, I'm, I, I don't have any experience in organization warehouse, but this is what I think logically. But these items at the top is because it is not fragile and is not used a lot because to having to take the item at the top shelf, it takes a lot of effort. So that's why it is placed at the top. So it's the same with code. When you refactor, you want to find the code that you want to look for and then you want to label them correctly and you want to put the correct things at the correct folder while documenting is why you have this set of code explain to me what this set of code does. So in summary, to be a productive Flutter developer or to be a Flutterer developer, what you need to do is to remove any form of communications, accept that you can't multitask, clean your messiness, refactor your code and document, document, document. This method I have implemented for maybe a year or many months and it has worked for me. However, disclaimer, it might not work for you. So this is just something that I want to share and you can try out. If it doesn't work, then find something else. And if you have any tips to be laser focused, to be a flutterer developer, then leave your tips in the comment section down below. So if you like it, give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more of these kind of videos. Stay safe and all the best. Bye. Bye. <music>